This instructional companion on 2D frames falls under the major topic statics, which contains the following two chapters, determinate statics and indeterminate statics. The chapter on determinate statics covers topics such as force systems and vectors, distributed forces, which I'm going to be doing uh, an, an instructional companion on that, equations of equilibrium, types of reactions, special members, uh, for which I've already done something on two force members, determinacy, types of beams, free body diagrams. We're going to get into that in this uh, particular recording. 2D equilibrium, which is really what this is about, except it's a 2D frame. Uh, couples, hinges, pulleys, which again is another uh, instructional companion, axial members, trusses, uh, things like that, zero force members, which will definitely be a uh, instructional companion in the future, uh, and th uh, other topics. I've called this uh, particular presentation a 2D frame because virtually every statics textbook uh, after, and typically they put it after the cover trusses, has a section called uh, frames and machines. Uh, and frames are, are things like this. They're made up of just static members. Uh, this is a simple two-member uh, frame. Many of them have two or three members. They might have a pulley and a weight, that sort of a thing. In contrast to a machine, which for statics is like a pair of pliers or a, a, a lifting grab, those, those kinds of things. So I've Want to, wanted to apply what uh, what we learned in the two force member uh, to this particular frame, which is one of the examples in the MERM, and it's under the it's almost at the end uh, of the uh, of the particular chapter on determinate statics, and it's it's titled two dimensional mechanisms. Uh, well, that's fine. Uh, I just wanted to pick something that that is uh, probably more familiar. Uh, that again in a statics book you had a, a, a section called frames and machines. And in this one, uh, whereas the MERM, uh, they're asking for what are the X and Y components of the reactions at B, I think the uh, MEPE exam question is going to be merely determine the force on the pin at B. Uh, and that's an ME question because once you have that, you can divide, uh, divide by the area or decide what that pin is going to be made out of and then figure out the diameter. So that's, a, that's more of an MEPE question. Okay, so the first thing we do in any equilibrium problem is draw the free body diagrams, and that's on the next slide. Okay, I've separated this particular frame into to two pieces, uh, the, the left piece, which is sort of an L, uh, and then the two force member, and it's a two force member because it's loaded only at its ends, B and C. There's a pin at B and a pin at C. Now, this uh, L member, uh, this is not a two-force member because it is loaded somewhere along its um, uh, distance from each of the pins. If there was a load only up here at, at, uh, at B, uh, I put a B up here, uh, then um, Yes, but th uh, this is a nice one. This actually shows how to take into account a couple, uh, discuss couples in another another location, uh, mainly associated with a beam. Uh, but uh, this is a couple, and how does that get added into the moment equation? So that'll be a good exercise here, uh, here as well. So uh, first thing to realize is that we don't apply equilibrium to BC because we already have in our assuming that it's a two-force member. We already applied, if you remember, uh, the three equation of equilibrium to the four unknowns, CX, CY, BX, BY, and came up with the you only have uh, two. Uh, we need a another FBC down here, uh, I, and I've made this intention. I, I, in this particular problem, you can look at it and realize, yes, FBC has to be uh, in the direction that it's shown, but it wouldn't have mattered to me. I'm going to put the any two-force member typically in uh, tension and go from there. If I get a negative number, then it had to be the other way. And I also like when I'm drawing these uh, free bodies, especially with multiple pieces, is to somehow connect Newton's third law. That, that's another big mistake is, is to have have those um, not opposite to each other. You know, two, force, two bodies in contact, uh, the forces are equal opposite and have the same line of action. I've also gone and calculated the angle to this. Uh, we only talked about it in generically in the two force member, but now we have specific numbers. It's the inverse tangent of 12 centimeters over 20 centimeters based on the dimensions that were given on the previous slide, and that came out to be about 31 degrees. It's like 30.96, but we can write it down as 31 degrees. 
these. So what we want to do is since we're only after FBC, we don't have to do equilibrium, all the equilibrium equations on uh, AB. What we can do, let me call it AB, is we can just take moments at A, uh, AX and AY won't be in it, and we will find FBC directly. Okay? But uh, one of the things is that we have uh, FBC as a single force. We could try to do the Olympic uh, trigonometry and figure out what is the perpendicular distance between A and B, but we're not going to go that way. I actually was taught to do that when I was in school at, at Georgia Tech, and whew, boy, uh, we don't need to do that. Um, what we can do is break up FBC into the two components that it has, and I'm just going to kind of come down here, and this is going to be FBC cosine, and I'm just going to call it theta at this particular point, and the vertical component is FBC sine theta, and um, the horizontal component will have a moment arm it's equal to, and I'll go on and put it here. Don't normally put dimensions on a, on a free body if they're already on the figure, but I don't want to go back to the other, other slide. So the horizontal component has a 30 centimeter moment arm. The vertical component has a 15 centimeter moment arm. Okay, so we're ready to, to write down then the sum of the moments about A uh, is equal to zero. Well, let's just say equal to zero. And also what we're going to see is, is that uh, the 70 Newton meter, so you've got to watch units here, centimeters and meters, we'll do that uh, here shortly here, is uh, the horizontal component produces a clockwise uh, moment. And remember, we have our um, coordinate system x, y, and moment from other uh, problems that we've done, x, y, and counterclockwise. So if we're holding it here, the 70 Newton meter is a positive uh, couple or positive couple moment, but the other two produce negative. So the first one, and it doesn't matter which one we do first, uh, I've just written down here on my little script, uh, minus FBC cosine theta times its moment arm, which is uh, 30 centimeters and then I kind of run out of room there, uh, minus uh, FBC sine theta times its moment arm, which is 15 centimeters. And then what we have is um, our positive 700 uh, Newton meters. Okay, and we'll do units uh, later, uh, equals zero. Okay, on the left-hand side, we've got a minus sign here. If we take the 70 on the other side, do that algebra, we'll have a negative. So all the negatives kind of go away, and we can kind of combine terms here in FBC. So let's do that. We'll do sort of a two-step piece here. So FBC's got two parts here. One of them is the first one is uh, 30 uh, centimeters times the uh, cosine of theta. Well, now we can go in here and put in uh, 31 degrees. Just use, of course, we have saved it in one of our wind, uh, storage locations. Uh, plus 15 centimeters times the sine of 31 degrees. All of that is equal to uh, 70 Newton meters. And we're going to multiply that times the conversion 100 centimeters per meter. We could have converted the centimeters. A lot of folks would have converted. In fact, uh, yeah, in fact, uh, our author uh, converted the uh, centimeters to meters, but it doesn't matter. It's just as long as you make that conversion, you're all right. So uh, what we've got here is just a number uh, here in brackets, and we've got that number. So we can do that uh, sort of on the next page. But I just want to make sure this is the rest of it's just uh, uh, arithmetic algebra and some arithmetic is again all we needed to do was look at this single member. Uh, we have that's a two force member. Break it into components and away we go. Okay, let's just uh, what I like to do even in PowerPoint is uh, when I get to the the bottom of one slide, take that and put it at the top of the next slide. I think that works out. And what uh, we can do here is we just go in and do the arithmetic and get this out of the way. Uh, if I was just work, if I was not working this for the MEP exam, just working it on the side, I would have kept it in theta and got sort of a general result. Maybe even kept the 30 and the 15 with some variables. But if you do that, and I'm just going to write you. Of course, you can keep this in one of your calculator. But I sort of get uh, 33 to two decimal places, 33.44. Um, centimeters there. And of course over here we're going to equal this uh, 7,000 
uh, Newton centimeters. So as we get ready to do it, the, the centimeters will cancel and we'll get an answer in uh, Newtons, which is what we're looking for. So if we do the algebra and the arithmetic, and I kind of like to do this step, uh, uh, is to put the um, 33, 44 centimeters here, 7,000 Newton centimeters, watch units, come down and say, okay, well, I'm going to get my answer is going to be in Newtons, and now I get check units. Do the algebra first, uh, check units, uh, make sure you've got the right uh, units. If you don't have that, it really doesn't matter what number you come out with. And when I do that, I get uh, at least to a whole number, 209 Newtons. I think I actually get 209.32 sort of thing. I keep that uh, off to the side here for, for the following. And that's uh, sort of the answer. If you, if you looked at the, uh, if you took the author's answer, uh, the question they had was bx uh, is equal to um, 179, and by they were just looking for the components. If you remember, 108. Those two together, uh, take the square root of the sum of the squares, uh, gives uh, up 209. So either way, and of course, uh, if you went on and did the, the uh, uh, BX and BY being the FBC cosine theta and um, uh, FBY, FBC sine theta, you would get those. Of course, there's a little bit different ra kind of rounded things off. But uh, that gives you the number, 209. If you knew what the material was, you could uh, do the stress. Sigma equals P over A, another, another discussion later on. Uh, and so you can come up with A. You can be round, pi R squared, so, or pi D squared over 4. And so you can find the, um, the area required for the pin or rivet or some other thing, which is, again, a, another topic for a future future um, recording. Okay. So again, I invite you to visit my website as part of your exam preparations and plan of study, www.drtomsclassroom.com. 